Okay, this how-to video is gonna talk about the high-speed analysis impedance workflow that's available inside the Cadence PCB tools. So I've got a completed PCB here and uh, normally the scenario would be that I would then send my board off to my signal integrity engineer for him to run um, some of the analysis through the signal T technology. But in this scenario, what I wanna do is I can actually do some of that, um, those, those checks before I send it to the, uh, the uh, signal integrity engineer because I've got that capability now inside of uh, the Cadence PCB tools. So the signature technology actually used inside of the Cadence PCB tools. So if we look under the Analyze menu, we've got something called the Workflow Manager. Um, so we've got a couple of options. We've got an Impedance Workflow option and a Coupling Workflow option. I'm gonna cover the Impedance Workflow in this video and uh, Coupling Workflow in another video. So we'll do an Impedance Workflow. So we're just basically checking for any uh, impedance discontinuities um, inside the design. And we can do this either based directly on a net or we can do it based on a directed group. So if I had a net based object, what I would do is it would just go and pick um, a list of the nets that I wanted to go and do the checking on. If I wanted to do a uh, directed group, what this does is this allows me to effectively choose um, the components that I'm interested in. You can obviously hide all the, the RLC components. So let's just say my key component here is U2. It would then highlight U2 and it then only shows me the components that effectively are connected to, to U2. So I could choose, um, in this example, I'm, I'm interested in U12 and U13, which are the two um, DDR memory devices. So I'm gonna choose those. It will show the highlighted on the, on the, on the screen. Um, so that's what I wanna do from a directed group point of view. I can then say create, and that creates this directed group at the top. And then it's only gonna look at the nets that connect U2 to U12 and U2 to U13. And you can see that in this list here. We'll click OK to that. We're then just gonna start the analysis uh, and wait for the impedance analysis to be complete. So once the analysis is complete, and you notice I didn't have to load any models or do anything like that, it's purely doing it based on um, the design that we have here. I can then start to look at things like impedance vision and impedance table. So let's have a look at the impedance vision. And what this does is it actually colors the, the tracks for me, or the C lines, um, based on the impedance value you've got. And you can see uh, I've got a colorable scale here that I can obviously adjust to show only objects in certain levels of impedance. So I can kind of, these are the ones I'm specifically interested in, for example. We can then zoom in and start to see some of the tracking and stuff like that and have a look at that. It's quite a useful feature. Um, if we look at the impedance table, this actually gives me a full list of all the nets that I've done the analysis on. So I get a full list here. I get the max, the min, the typical conductance, the impedance, the trace length, detail, totals, etc. Um, the one I'm interested in, obviously you can see this scenario here, DDR A12. I've got a, a bit of an issue here, so I'm going from effectively a min up to a max. Um, let's have a look at this. So we can just double click on this. This will then show me those individual segments. And I can see a lot of these are, are very, very similar impedance wise. I've got a little bit of an issue here, so let's just double click on this scenario. It will then zoom and center the screen to where that issue is. So um, let's just simplify the display. So we'll go to the visibility pane and we'll just turn all the layers off apart from the bottom, which is where the tracking is. I've got an issue going on here. Let's just turn on the plane beneath it. Oh, I can see the issue straight away. I've obviously got, I've got a, a split in my power plane. You can see the split here. Um, something I didn't realize, I didn't cater for that. Um, it's not gonna give me a good impedance if I start putting splits in my plane. So I'll probably wanna maybe correct that maybe adjust the, the, the plane. But I've done this all myself without having to go over to my signal integrity engineer to, to, to find this and tell this for me. Um, so I'm saving time in my workflow. 